Hello. In this tutorial series, we are going to build this classic NES controller, and we're going to take advantage of a few things that we haven't looked at yet in the previous tutorial series. Uh, we're going to use geometry to control the material ID assignments in Substance Painter. So like everything that's, got, that's a different material here needs to be a separate piece of geometry, or at least it needs to have its own verts. In this case, we're probably just going to make everything separate because it's just much easier that way. And then um, we're going to be able to give each of those separate pieces of, of, of geometry a unique vertex color, and then we'll use that as a, a mask in Substance Painter so that we can easily create these material assignments without having to hand paint anything, which is a giant pain. The other thing that we're going to do is we are going to do away with the notion that we need to have some kind of intrinsic connection between the high poly and the low poly geometry. We're going to create the high poly and we're going to do whatever we need to do to make it happen and then we're going to generate new low poly geometry using a process called quadra which will um, basically be creating a brand new mesh just by clicking on the surface of the high poly so we do not have to try to cut out edges or, or do anything to the high poly to support the low poly to make it as efficient as possible while still capturing the silhouette so those two additional new techniques will will kind of round out your your knowledge base for how to make assets, hopefully, um, at least sort of more simple ones like this. There's lots more techniques out there that uh, I would love to get to and probably will at some point, but uh, I think it's important that we look at this, so let's get going. I'm going to go ahead and just jump in with the modeling on this now. We will begin with a polycube, and I'm going to use my scale transform gizmo here to get something approximately accurate and then I can see it kind of bows out a little bit there's like a little clamshell thing happening here so I'm going to grab that ring just by clicking this edge and then shift clicking this edge uh, double click I guess actually and it'll go ahead and grab the ring for you and then we can go ahead and insert an edge with connect and I feel like it's a little bit lower down like maybe uh, one third down rather than right in the middle. So we'll just move it down a little bit. And if I scale it uniformly, which is to say from the yellow, what you can see is I don't get the same distance out uh, for, for all the edges here. So I want to be aware of that. I need to, uh, I can I can get one going, but then I've got to kind of go to the top view and look down and and just make sure that it's kind of a consistent distance. And the reason for that is this, these edges are, are a different length, so they get a little bit of a different piece of information from that uniform scale. And now that I've got that edge there, I'm going to go ahead and bevel it. But uh, that's definitely going to be too much. I think something like 0.05 will be better, because it really is a fairly small feature. And I'll go ahead and double click all those faces there. Sorry, it's not a double click, it's you select one and then you shift double click. The shift is important to get the ring there. And we can do a extrude operation. And we'll just kind of move it in a little bit. This should be consistent, unlike the uh, the scale. I think the extrude is gives each face the same value. All right, so I've got some initial construction history here. I'm going to add a few more things that I want to hang on to, but I don't really need this. So just to keep things nice and easy, I'm going to go ahead and delete the history. And then I'm going to go to Edit Mesh and Add Divisions. So the reason I want to add divisions is because I'm going to go to Mesh Smooth here. I'll show you what happens if I add the smooth without the subdivisions. Uh, let me go ahead and set this back to its default settings. We're going to get something like that, which is not what I'm going for. Uh, so what I need to do is I basically need to add some supporting edges here. Let me show you what that looks like. So for instance, if I were to come over and, and like add a uh, add an, an edge, I can sharpen up that corner there. So we'll insert our edge loop. So now if I were to go back and add another smooth modifier, like you can see now this is all sharp, whereas that's all squishy, but it still looks terrible. And I don't want to go through and, and have to add a bunch of these things to support 
what is a pr pretty consistent amount of smoothing around this piece of geometry. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to add a bunch of divisions procedurally. So that's this edit mesh, add divisions, and then into divisions I'm going to modify the value from 1 to 4. So now all of a sudden, look, I have all these wonderful supporting edges, so I can just add my smooth modifier. Where is it? And I get a much better looking result. And the nice thing about this is if I want to go back and modify some of these values, like if I wanted it to be a little bit uh, rounder, I can reduce my divisions. And as I have less divisions, I have less support for those edges. So it gets progressively rounder and rounder. Whoops, let me try that again. So this is going to be in the poly sub D face. Set that to four. And I did an experiment before. Let me just try it again. If I bump it up to five. Oh, it looks fine. Okay, cool. So you can change this to whatever you want and the smooth modifier will just basically uh, grab that new geo and, and do what it's supposed to do with it. So this will be okay for now, I believe. That's going to be our base. So I'm just going to come over here and we'll just call this guy base. So now what I want is I want to be able to create this dark gray area. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a piece of geometry that represents that. So I'm going to just make a plane. We'll go to polygon primitives and we'll make a plane. And it just kind of needs to sit above the surface here. Because what we're going to do when we create this low poly is we're going to set up the the edge smoothing in such a way that it's going to allow us to basically look at all of the stuff that's sitting up here and just kind of bake down onto it i think some of the stuff i got to kind of figure out as i go but uh for now i'm going to go ahead and add that same that same configuration so right now we've got because i've got my initial construction history i can actually come come over here pretty easily and increase my my count but if I try to smooth this, let me actually just show you what will happen. Go to Mesh Smooth. It's not that noticeable, I guess, but this the, the, the radius on this isn't perfectly circular. It's going to be kind of tighter on this end and, and more round on this end because the, the spacing here isn't consistent. So what I need to do is actually change my subdivisions so that they are giving me a, a more square input poly rather than this, uh, this rectangular one. So let me actually, I'll show you how to delete one of these if you if you decide you want to undo it. You can just also hit control Z. But I'm going to go to the attribute editor. And in the attribute editor, if you don't have the attribute editor, it's one of the things, I think it's just control A is the hotkey for that. Uh, and you can also go to Windows and it'll be in here probably somewhere. Let's see, right at the top of general editors, attribute editor. And you can see all of our little inputs here. So we've got our poly smooth face and our poly plane. So with the poly smooth face tab selected, I can just select here and then just tap the delete button and it will go away. So if I have head back over to the channel box, you can see now it's just our input. So what I need is for there basically to be probably be twice as many uh, this way as there are this way so that we can get these looking a little bit more like squares. So I can just guess which one that is. Whoops, not one, let's try 40. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Like that's, they're not quite there. Let's try 50. Great. Okay. So those are, that's squared off enough. So now when I add my smooth modifier here, uh, it's in mesh smooth. Now we're getting a nice round surface. And if I want, I can increase this a little bit to get that looking a little bit smoother. I believe So I have just set this to exponential versus linear. Yeah, okay. So you can see if you've got your, uh, your, your heads up display here showing what the poly counts are, I have just pushed this to 8 million polygons and that is danger zone. So let me just back off that a bit. 
we'll set this back to 5, we can see what the difference is. We go from 8 to 2, 2 is still kind of a lot. Let's go to 4. ZBrush can handle these numbers without too much trouble, but I think uh, Maya might be a little bit picky. So let's see. But we're not getting any rounding here, so that means I've got to come back and set this back to linear, I suppose. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But for now, that's fine. Um, and this can be the dark gray base, or dark gray, whatever. We'll have to figure out how we want to name these things so they're a little easier to see what's going on. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and create initially some materials. I could add vertex color, but I'm concerned it's going to make the uh, specularity go away. So let me show you kind of what I'm talking about there. So if I go to my mesh display, we'll open up apply color. So I want this to be kind of like a, a uh, dirty gray here. There's a lot of vert, so it's going to take a second. So yeah, so now you can see we can no longer see the difference here or we, like that. The lighting is getting super subtle, so it's kind of hard to follow what's going on. So I'm just going to do this with materials and then at the end we'll go through and assign uh, the vert colors that make sense. So we can front load these a little bit. We'll go to blend. So I'm just clicking blend here and this is the, uh, uh, the hyper shade which you can get to by clicking this little green circle. So we'll call this one base. Uh, and it put a little one there because I've already got something in the scene called base. And you can only have one object with a name. And this is like a little lighter. So you can see now, like I can increase my color and I'm getting, I'm still seeing the shading. So this is a pretty useful way to go about doing that. And then for whatever this is, dark gray, I'll make another blend here. And this one I'll just call dark gray. Maybe we can do like dark gray matte. Whatever. Spelling, capitalization. And then for this, we'll go like a little darker. Something like that. And now I'm able to differentiate between these two pieces of geo here without too much trouble. And still get some lighting on there. But I can also get a little idea of what the color is going to be. Okay, so we'll leave this for now and pick it up in the next video.